Oh, this one's not on.
like this, meaning it doesn't touch the strings or the top of the guitar at all. Sometimes I rest a couple fingers on the pick guard. Sometimes I grab the first string. Sometimes this part of my hand will rest on the bridge pins and uh, various things. Sometimes I play up here, which sounds completely different than. sounds you want. It's kind of more mellow up here. And I just stole that whole technique from banjo players because, you know, they, some of them are down here, but now and then they'll come up here when, when something needs to be pretty. <laughs> and they'll play up there. It's a more mellow sound. And it's really nice. And then it makes you appreciate more when they come back here because it's, it's a contrast. Same with the guitar. You know, depending on where you place your and where you plug the strings, the sound's going to be different. What about you, Clay? I play banjo. I, I started playing banjo when I was seven, so I never got out of the habit of looking up or just playing my fingers right on the pick right there. So when I play rhythm, though, when I play lead, I'll play those two fingers, but it's all comes from the banjo. Yeah. It's how you plant your fingers when you play five, you know, so I just took that when I quit playing. When I could not play banjo, I transformed it to guitar playing. And just kept it playing. Mm -hmm. And you do that uh, during rhythm or during just uh, the lead? Or well, sometimes when I'm feeling a, like, like a G-Run or something, I'll play it. You know, I, every time I'll do something picking wise, I'll put my hand down. But during rhythm, I'll Well, you're a powerhouse, that's for sure. What about you, Alan? I just try to do it like David does it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I say it like that. You can see I got a war spot on my guitar right here, so I, I play banjo too. It's the same deal. I, I brace with a little finger at least, anchor most of the time for lead. If I play rhythm, most of the time it's a free hand. It gives me a little more power than to drive a harder rhythm, I think. Well, I have a little shorter forearms, so uh, I have a tendency to instead of a lot of guys are reaching in from back here to play, I'm more up on top. And I pivot my fingers from right here at the end of the sound hole and hook them under the little lead. And uh, when I play rhythm, it's a whole different story, but when I do any lead, I'll hook them like that. It kind of helps me pivot back and forth and line out where I want to go. What I'd like to ask y'all is to, it's cool to copy some of these techniques that we're doing, especially if they're new to you. You should explore those and see what happens, if they work for you or not. But you should also kind of explore some that we haven't talked about that we maybe don't know, that maybe you could stumble across and be your own little deal. That's the coolest. All my favorite musicians are self-taught. They didn't learn from a book. Most of them didn't learn from watching somebody. They, they heard ideas in their head, and the only way they could get those ideas out was to create a new technique. And lots of those players are amazing groundbreakers, people we look up to like Earl Scruggs, Bill Monroe, Vassar Clements. All these guys weren't traditional, you know, when they started out. They were groundbreakers, Bill Monroe and Earl Scruggs especially. Trailblazers. It's all called uh, comfort and style, you know, where you're most comfortable playing at and how your, your technique is that you're comfortable playing with. Shall we play another? Sure. Or are there any questions? Does anyone have a Yes, sir. Uh, what's the difference between the four of you and how you hold your pick? The question was, how do we each hold our picks? And uh, I'll tell you what, is I kind of went by the Mel Bay way, if you ever seen one of those books, and who hasn't, right? And they tell you to curl your first finger up like that, and that's what I've done, but through the years, and it's been many, <laughs> since I've started playing is my first finger, this one. <laughs> For those of you who don't know which one's your first, no, it's this one, your index finger. It kind of got lazy and doesn't really curl up as much anymore and it points down some. And at the end of the day, you can see black on my fingernail where the strings have rubbed it, where my finger has hit the strings. Are you using the points? Yeah, well, there's there's three of them, and they're all useful. Any one works. 
That's why I got these ones because it'll it'll turn in my in my grip sometimes. You know, so there's not a certain one I use. I try to use it evenly so it'll wear evenly. So that's how I hold the pig. Sometimes I'll use my fingers also, you know. Anyway, so those are some of the things I do with the pig. How about you, Clay? I'm very similar. Just exactly like, actually, we hold them at dinner. Yeah. We hold it exactly like this. Look, what I basically try to do when I tell somebody I try to hold it, just lay it in your finger like that and just grab it. Just like that. David and I are I think I'm the pig. I use a heavy pick too, and that's a heavy gauge pick. And dead turtle. Yeah, mine too. How about you? Well, I'm for more of the ecology, you know, save that, and I uh, use plastic. And, uh, but I, uh, I uh, use a 1.14 millimeter, which is pretty thick, but uh, when I hold it, just the tip sticks out of my fingers, you know, so it even stiffens it up more. And uh, I don't know if you guys play with more of the side of your, of your pick or if you play flat, you know, with your pick, you know, or if it's the edge. But I have a tendency to play more on the edges, which uh, will wear a put down before long, you know, but uh, it does stiffen it up. And I still have the, the little green on my finger, you know, and from the strings, that is. And uh, also on my thumb, because uh, my thumb will kind of rub across on an upstroke. So I'll have it on the edge of my thumb here and on the tip of this finger. How about you, Ellen? I just try to do it like Dave does it. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a count, man. Well, that's the best way, I think. Hey, I even got there. You know, I had to even go back to the dressing room and change shoes because I got down here and was wearing white tennis shoes, so I had to go change up too. I do actually hold the pick very similar though. I found as years go by, you try to increase certain aspects of your playing when you get the fundamentals down, and, and probably the most common question that I see around is how do you play faster and one of the techniques that I've found for that is the less pick actually makes contact through the string the easier it is to get past that string to your next point of contact so very little pick actually hold, comes out I actually have a callus on my thumb there from, from the uh, strings that's how close I'll actually hold it um, from cross picking for some reason I get like a whole lot of pick out there I'll, I'll ride halfway up and pick the cross pick for some reason and rhythm pretty much the same as well. It's a little more reaction from the pick that way, I think. But for speed, I'm, I'll buckle down to just a little bit of tip. And I've got some of this really rare purple tortoise. <laughs> You've got tortoise then, don't you? Yeah. That's a good subject, Alan, about playing faster. People ask about that. And I mean, this is redundant, but I too, when I play faster, I end up playing quieter and not nearly as loud. And that's because the same thing Alan said as I can't put the pick so far down in between the strings because it takes time and effort to push through that string and to push it that far down before you even start to push through the string. Practice that at home. If you just play, if you look down, you can see sometimes the pick's just like barely past the string at all. Just down enough you don't, sometimes you don't even see the pick. So the width of the string covers the pick. That's blah, blah, blah. David, are your picks round or do they have a point on them? They're triangular. Okay, they there's three, three points. points. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a hand up over here a second ago. We had a question. Has Clay ever assigned a name to disguise? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Rice, Doc Watson, um, Leonard Skinner, pretty much, you know, real diverse, Earl Scruggs, you know, yeah. but Tony and Doc, you know, pretty much, I guess, you know, Doc Watson was the first guitar player I ever heard. I you know, heard Tony Rice, and then my life was over then. So. But yeah. Are there any other? The question was, who was my earliest influence, and I guess that would be, uh, gee, 
I don't know, I'm torn. See, Clarence White was my first like guitar influence, but my father played banjo, which meant that I was always traveling with him and going to festivals and picking parties and all. So, you know, I was always hearing that, you know, the music in the background, whether I was paying attention or not. Sometimes I was, some, most of the time I wasn't. The other kids there, I'd be playing with them. And so, but the music was always, you could hear it, no matter where you were in the house or yard. In festivals, you know, you hear that for miles, it seems like. So, uh, those are some of my earliest remembrances. I think Clarence White was the first one, because my dad was a big Kentucky Colonels fan, so he had tapes, you know, and records, and he's always playing them. So I heard those around the house all the time, too. So that is my first influence. But since then, there's been many, 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 many. Very different kinds of music, you know. Just whatever strikes me that I like, that's what I'll try to listen to, try to steal ideas from. So the older I get, the slower these ideas come to me, but I keep listening. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I do it. Well, the cross picking you can do, it's just three strings, whether you fret them or not, it's still, right? You can fret a D chord. <laughs> or G. Any way, you know, or not. It's, it's a right hand technique. It's, it doesn't matter with your left hand so much. What actual strings am I playing? Well, that depends on what actual notes I'm wanting to hear. And um, if I was wanting to hear these notes, I'd be playing these first three strings. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, so it, it varies. Each song's different. Feel free to quote me on these later. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not certain I know how to answer your question. Show him that lick I showed you now. Got him in the palm of my hand. <laughs> yeah, what should we do? What do you want to play? Big Sandy. You going to kick that off?
come. We've got time for lots more. There's always room for guitars. So, how about we all just do one solo and show what we've been doing at the, around the house and what we've been working on lately and, and what all. So. This is gonna get ugly, guys. <laughs> yeah. You wanna go, Alan? You go first. You wanna go first? <laughs> what have I been working around the house on now? Well, I don't great. know, engagement walk? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Here's one I wrote a long time ago. Still goes the same way.
Well, All right, well, I guess we're about done now. <laughs> Welcome to the Starlight Lounge. <laughs> you all got something? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Are there any questions? Uh, over here. Yes, sir. can you do with your left hand to build up strength in your left hand? What do you do with your right hand? What sort of deal you do there? Rhythm. And uh, that's easy, all right. This hand, the left hand goes like this. And this hand, that's really all there is. That's right. No, um, I never really did any exercises like that. You know, I know there's some out there and people advocate doing them because probably they invented them and they're trying to sell you a book. But I just played tunes. I learned how to play some tunes and then I just played those all the time. And through the repetition of playing those, the strength built, you know, just from that. You know, it's like, I don't know. I don't want to learn to do something else so I can do this. I want to learn how to do this. You know, the people in the back row don't care how many times you can squeeze this little thing in your hand, right? They want to hear how much music you can make out of this instrument. And that has always been my guideline. Of course, I developed that, that theory after not knowing any of those exercises. But, so it all depends. You know, there's different ways for different folks. There's not one right way. If you learn anything about anything, there's not a right way. You just do it whichever way works best for you. Just persevere. The longer you do it, you're bound to get good. That's how I feel. I find the thing that, <clears throat> to me, is most uh, striking and impressive about your playing is the way all these different uh, this bag of techniques kind of just flow from just a phrase to another phrase with a different kind of technique and another phrase with a different technique. Is that something you think a lot about or you work on? Well, I have a lot of different influences, and, and those techniques are just ways that you know, I've developed to try to get those ideas out. I in no way have ever, you know, came up with a technique that's all mine. There ain't no way that has ever happened. I've stolen techniques, and techniques I came across that I thought were mine aren't. You know, later on I'll see somebody else doing them in a whole different kind of music or whatever. And so it's hard to invent something that's all your own, but it can be new to you, you know, same thing. So yeah, whatever I do is just trying to make the song better. And I have a lot of different influences, so I might try different things. So I'm, you might hear me play a solo kind of like Doc Watson, and then in the middle of it, I'll do something, you know, that I'm sure he wouldn't do, that maybe Les Paul would do or something, you know? Who knows? And so they're all notes. I mean, this, everybody's played this note at one time or another, so, you know, it's what all those musicians have in common. It's how you string them up. There's only so many notes, but the way to make those notes seem like they're more is the phrasing you use instead of... You know, or however you want to phrase that. It's the same idea three different ways, and there's many, many ways to do the same thing. That's the cool part of music because that's how you get to express yourself, how you put these things together. What do y'all say about that? Yeah. Perfect, Kurt. <laughs> what should we do? You want to pick one? Are there any more questions or you want to hear a song? I want to hear Kurt do a little solo here. Oh man, I can work this I can play it. Well, I'll try this thing. I'm, I'm glad for something, but I ain't finished it. I think we all know how to tune.
I noticed when you're working on the room. Any questions, like about the tuning or anything? I didn't name it. You guys helped me name it. I just wrote it this week. You are in detuning, right? Open detuning. And uh, open D, Dad, we call it Dad, 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 I just, I was fooling around with the tune. Yeah, and I just, my little leg was starting to move.
said, I haven't been playing around the house much. Uh, trying to get some new material together for a new CD project, hopefully coming up for a long time. I'll do a piece here that I've been working on around the house for a little while now, actually. Um, hopefully this will be on the next CD coming out. It's a tune called Flatland. all the time so I'll, let's turn it back up and get picked. I want to say it's a pleasure to pick with these guys and some of them I've picked with before and it's actually the first time I've met today and had a good time and, and uh, of course me and Bull, I've been in rehab on each other a while. Well, that was very nice. Like that. But our time has come to an end. We've got time for maybe one more song. kind of guitars we have. This is made by Jim Merrill. It's a Merrill guitar. This is made by Clark Dameron. It's a uh, Dameron Guitars in Nashville. This is made by Mario Pru from Ontario, Canada. This is the Collins D2H, made out of Austin, Texas. Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Sure. No? Yeah? No? I don't care. Who wants to kick it? I got it. <laughs> <laughs>
workshop stage. We got uh, we got a grandeur workshop coming up next. You'll love that.